Hey everyone, it's Kenji, I'm at home, and we're gonna make some beef and broccoli today. So, Chinese American classic here. Um, and one of my favorites growing up. So, first thing we got is some beef. This happens to be flap steak, um, also known as sirloin flap, or if you're in if you're in Boston, it's called steak tips. This is butterflied, which is how they do it out here in California. Um, if you can't get flat meat, um, I would also recommend something like skirt steak, or hanger steak, or flank steak. Anything that has a sort of coarse grain like this is good because that's going to absorb marinade, um, and it's also going to be more tender. So what I'm doing first, so you'll notice the meat has a grain to it, right? The grain runs kind of this way, right? So what we first want to do is cut with the grain into pieces that are about, about an inch and a half to two inches wide, okay? So with the grain first, and then after that, we're gonna take each one of these and we're gonna cut them against the grain with our knife at an angle. And cutting against the grain, that's sort of what, what you're doing is shortening those muscle fibers so that your pieces end up more tender. This is all gonna go into a bowl. This is a very easy, easy, easy dish. Um, and thankfully it's one that, as long as you follow a few tips which I'm gonna give you, you can do indoors. Um, you, don't, you don't need like a, uh, you don't need a fancy wok setup. You don't need anything real powerful. You can do it just on a regular old burner indoors. In fact, you could even do it um, on an electric cooktop with a flat pan if you really want. Although, um, although contrary to what my previous employer contends, or at least used to contend, they may be, I think they've changed their minds about this more recently, um, you don't get the same flavors that you get in a stir fry um, in a wok. Uh, you don't get the same flavors in a pan. This just has to do with the way uh, the oil vaporizes as it goes through the fire and the way things get tossed, they just don't taste quite the same when you're in a pan. Western pans are designed more for searing, whereas in stir fries, you don't really sear so much. Like you don't, you're not really generally looking to build a crust or brown the exterior of a piece of meat. Um, you're really looking to cook it really fast and drive off moisture really fast. Um, and most of the color in a stir fry, rather than from coming from the Maillard reaction, you know, or caramelization, those two browning reactions that happen with high heat, it comes from the sauces. All right, so we got our meat here. I have a separate cutting board that I put on top of my first one when, uh, whenever I work with meat. That way it's easier to clean. I don't have to worry about contaminating all my other stuff. All right, so I get my knife clean so I can start working on my broccoli. Meanwhile, I'm gonna just marinate this meat you want to marinate the meat for at least about 15 minutes or so. You don't need to go much longer than that. Um, so I got a little bit of light soy sauce, probably about a teaspoon. This is this is about three quarters of a pound of beef. I, I'm I kind of eyeballing everything, um, but I'll put a link to um, a recipe. Um, a little bit of sesame oil, some shushing wine, about two teaspoons. Oops, that's a little too much. Don't want quite that much. It's going to steam too much if we put that much in. Uh, this is a little MSG. Some cornstarch. About a teaspoon of cornstarch. And this is the real secret ingredient, baking soda. About a quarter teaspoon per half pound of meat. So that's about a quarter plus an eighth of a teaspoon that I just put in there. Um, what the baking soda does is it's, it uh, tenderizes the meat. So I'm not, you know, I'm not exactly sure of the mechanism. Um, Cooks Illustrated, my, my old employer, Cooks Illustrated, they, um, put, they wrote an article saying that it has to do with um, raising the pH will prevent um, some kind of cross-linking of protein so that it doesn't tighten up as much when you cook it, um, and thus it stays more tender and it retains more moisture. Um, I'm not really, it sound, it, reading it, it sounded a little bit kind of hand wavy. Um, so I'm not really sure if that's the reason, but suffice it to say, adding baking soda to your beef um, or your chicken or your any kind of any kind of protein um, that's the that's the key to getting it really nice and soft and tender. It's what they do at Chinese restaurants. Um, that's how they get their meat nice and tender. And you also want to massage it pretty roughly. So you see how I'm really working that marinade in. Um, you know, just as just as massaging a knot in your in your muscles, you're getting a, a, a knot in your muscles. Massage will help loosen it up and tenderize it. Um, massaging meat will also loosen it up and tenderize it, so it doesn't um, 
so that it's more tender when you cook it. All right. So next, I'm going to set that aside. We're going to let that marinate for about 15 minutes. So at some point in this video, I'll probably do a jump cut because I don't have enough stuff to do to fill up the next 15 minutes. Um, but we are going to, what we are going to do next is get our broccoli. So this is actually broccolini, which is what I prefer for this. Um, or you can use Chinese broccoli. Um, so what I'm going to do is the stems, I'm going to cut them kind of at an angle like that, just until the florets get separated. And that's it. Okay, the stems are a little bit tougher, which is why you want to cut them um, into thinner strips, whereas the florets you can just leave whole. Um, you can do this with regular broccoli or do it the exact same way. Cut the stems on a bias into thin pieces, leave the florets whole. Um, and with real, you know, real large broccoli, European style broccoli um, or American style broccoli, um, you might even want to pe consider peeling the bottoms of the stems. Um, the stem, broccoli stems are actually. I remember seeing this on, on Jacques Pepin when I was a, a young kid, and then again more recently, I think I, on one of his rerun, PBS reruns, he talks about how um, how uh, the the stems of the broccoli are the most broccoli are the most broccoli e parts of the broccoli, if you know what I mean. All right, so I got some water going here. We're gonna par cook this broccoli, steam it, sort of a combination of steam slash oil just for just for about a minute okay we don't want to we don't want it to turn soft we just want to let it minute uh, let it go for about a minute just till it's nice and tender crisp um, high heat just a little bit of water in there and meanwhile I'm gonna come over here and make my sauce all right so for my sauce dark soy sauce about a tablespoon. Light soy sauce, about a tablespoon. So light soy sauce actually has stronger flavor than dark soy sauce. Dark soy sauce typically you add, its main contribution is color. Oyster sauce, this is gonna be my main thing here, so about two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Shaoxing wine we're gonna add separate. Oops. And then um, we're going to also make a little cornstarch slurry on the side. So we probably won't use all this, but I'm getting a couple tablespoons of cornstarch and about a tablespoon of water, cold water. If you add hot water, this cornstarch will not, um, will form little bubbles that have dry starch in the inside and you won't be able to dissolve them. Always cold water. All right, so broccoli's done. Drain it off, get into the bowl. I'm gonna use the same bowl to serve in later. All right, now our wok is ready for our stir fry. Our broccoli is ready to go. Oh, the last sauce ingredient about a tablespoon of sugar. So again, in here there is um, a couple teaspoons or a tablespoon or so of dark soy, light soy, um, tablespoon each of dark soy and light soy, about two tablespoons of oyster sauce, about a tablespoon of sugar. And that is our whole sauce here. So sweet, savory, salty. That's the sort of classic beef of broccoli sauce flavor. All right, that's good to go. And now our last two ingredients are our aromatics. There's garlic and ginger. This happens to be actually just that pre-peeled garlic, um, which is not the greatest garlic to use. Um, and I know, I know some people vehemently are opposed to pre-peeled garlic, but sometimes I just get it because I'm feeling lazy. So smash, 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 smash. Don't need to be super fine or precise with the garlic in this dish. Okay. Good enough. And ginger. I'm gonna save these chunks for later. And I'm gonna take a piece like this. Dip 
take off the skin. You can also, if you if you uh, find it easier, or if you you know don't want to futz around with your knife like this, you can peel ginger with a spoon. Just scrape it with a spoon, and the skin will come right off. Um, I don't want to bother messing up a spoon right now, so I don't. All right, and so for the ginger, I'm gonna cut it against the grain into these kind of coins, okay? And then similar to garlic, I'm gonna smack it like that. You see how it breaks up along with its grains? And then it just needs some rough chopping. And it's good to go. All right. I'm gonna let that beef marinate now for about 15 minutes. Um, and so, and now through the magic of shutting off my camera and turning it back on again 15 minutes later, uh, we are ready to cook. So, wok, high heat. Um, this is a flat bottomed 14 inch heavy gauge wok. So about two millimeters thick is what you want on a wok. Um, one and a half to two millimeters. Uh, and this is carbon steel. Uh, well seasoned, so that means it's, it's sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's essentially non-stick when you, when you season carbon steel well enough. Um, and the key to cooking indoors on a wok is that you don't ever want to crowd the pan. Um, so I'm doing a small enough batch um, that I can probably do this all in one go. But if I was doing any more meat than this, say I was doing like a full pound of meat, um, I would sear the meat off in two separate batches and transfer it to a bowl in between. Then at the end I would add everything back in uh, because Indoors, an indoor wok burner, you know, your uh, your home range probably has an output of maybe 15,000 BTUs max, whereas a, uh, you know, or maybe if you have a real high-end stove, 25 or 30,000, whereas a wok burner at a restaurant, when they do large batches, that's more like 160 to 200,000 BTUs, um, but really you want like a minimum of about 100,000 BTUs uh, in order to properly stir fry a lar like a full quantity of meat. Um, so in this case, we're going to just, instead, we're going to preheat really well. We want that oil to be nice and smoking hot, the wok to be hot all around, and we need everything ready to go. So I got my marinated meat, I've got my aromatics, I've got my sauce, my cornstarch slurry, uh, and my broccoli. Oh, and finally, my serving platter. Oh no, I'm going to put it right back into this broccoli bowl, that's right. Okay. Ready? Here we go. So once we start, it goes fast, okay? So I'm gonna put my beef in first. Spread it out, use as much surface area as I can. Now with a real hot, you know, a real powerful wok, you could be tossing and stirring this the whole time. Um, on a home range like this though, it's better to let it sit for just a little bit, just so that it really has a chance to start searing through. Um, you don't really want much color to develop on it. You don't need it to start a brown or anything, um, but you do want it to start sort of searing through without steaming. So just about 20, 30 seconds on that side. We'll give it a stir and a toss. Okay. And once it's almost all the way cooked through, once there's no, not much pink or red remaining uh, on the exterior, I'm gonna go in with my aromatics, so my garlic and my ginger. on the highest possible heat. On an indoor setup like this, I'm gonna go high heat the entire time. Whereas with a, you know, an outdoor setup or, an, or a big or more powerful setup, um, I would lower the heat a little bit to make sure that nothing burns. Okay, so now it's starting to smell real nice. The aromatics are softened, the beef is essentially cooked through. I'm gonna stir up my sauce. I'm gonna go right in. I'm gonna kinda go around the sides. That helps give it a little bit more of that seared flavor. All right, and then my broccoli goes in.
Just a touch of a cornstarch slurry. Let's see how that does. That looks about right to me. I don't think we need any more cornstarch than that. And that is done. American beef and broccoli with oyster sauce. Mm, I love that. Sweet, sour, sorry, sweet and savory. Very aromatic. Yes, you can have a little bit of trouble. Let me cool down for you. Good girl. Now, wasn't that quick and easy? All right. Guys, gals, non-binary pals, wear a mask, stay safe, be healthy, and I'll see you next time. Oh, real quick before I go, I wanted to quickly show you how I uh, keep my wok seasoned. So all I did was scrub this out with um, this little scrubby guy and some water, just like that, scrubbed it out, okay, under running water. And now what I'm gonna do, put it directly over, get all the excess water out, put it directly over, over a burner. This is what I do to my wok every time I cook in it. Um, same with my carbon steel, same with my cast iron. This is how I main, keep my stuff maintained, keep the seasoning there, keep it nice and non-stick. Now what we're gonna do is just let, let this heat up until that water evaporates. Okay, then I'm gonna grab a little Oh, I was going to say I would grab a little paper towel. I don't know where that went, though. Here, let me grab a little napkin here. Oh, I think I have them outside. All right, I'm going to grab a little napkin. Put some oil in there, not too much. And then just rub it out. And that's it. So you want to basically get the oil in there and then sort of pretend like you accidentally did it. And you're trying to get everything back out okay that's all you have to do every once in a while I'll also do the outside but I don't do that every single time I uh, every single time I cook in it all right now for real guys 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 gals non-binary pals I will see you later